Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to factor when A is equal to 1 for a trinomial. And there's kind of two different ways we like to do this. Uh, one is kind of just doing the process in our head, which I think once you get a lot of practice is obviously the way that you'd like to go. And the second method is what we call kind of like the diamond method, um, which I think is you know very helpful. Even though I don't really do a diamond, I kind of do an X. But still, the idea of it is just a way to kind of organize exactly what you'd be doing if you're doing it in your head anyways. Um, but to kind of understand the diamond method, though, we would at least need to understand the standard form of a quadratic, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, in this case, you can see we have our a is always 1. So we're going to kind of forget about our a. And we're just going to deal with b and c, where b is the coefficient of our linear term, and c is going to be our constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alternate. Um, by doing each method either way. So the first one, I, the way that I like to do it, is just using the dime method. If you really have no understanding of your factoring, um, basically um, all we simply want to do is take this form. See, there's no, you know, we want to rewrite this as a product of two factors. Two expressions that when we multiply them are going to provide this trinomial. So to do that, what we do is we label C and B, where C is our constant, and b is our uh, coefficient of our linear term. So c in this case is 5, and b in this case is c. And basically what we want to be able to do is say, all right, what two numbers multiply to give us 5, but then add to give us 6? So to do that, we literally just take the number 5, and we say, what are the two numbers that multiply to give us 5? Well, 5 is a prime number. So the only two numbers that multiply to give us 5 are 5 and 1. So then on the sides, we write down those numbers. Now, again, 5 times 1 is not going to give us this whole expression, right? So I need to write it as a product, ah, a product of its factors. So by factoring this, what I will obtain is look like this. x plus 5 times x plus 1. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of as simple as that. I didn't really go into explaining on why we're doing or how everything works like that. But if you remember, if you go back to FOIL, right? we learned how to multiply binomials. When we go to FOIL and you apply FOIL, what you'll notice is by multiplying these two binomials, you're going to obtain this trinomial. All right. So, so now you kind of have a basic idea of when you factor a trinomial, you're going to get two binomials. So if we're going to do this in our head, let's just take a look at, well, we know it's going to be two factors, right? Two factors. And what's nice about having x squared and where a is 1, we know that the first two terms have to be x times x. right? I have to multiply x times x to give me x squared. So now I just need to determine what are these two numbers. What are the two numbers that are going to multiply to give me 10? right? But remember, from using this diamond method, we're not only concerned about what two numbers multiply to give us our constant, but then out of those numbers, what two numbers multiply to give us our middle term. So basically, when I'm doing this in my head, what I'm thinking about is, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 10, and what two numbers add to give me negative 3? So now this kind of comes into a dilemma. Why did I only pick 5 and 1? Because um, not always is you know, the answer just going to be that problem. Because what are the factors of negative 10? Well, this can be kind of confusing here. Because negative 10, I can have a negative 10 times positive 1. I can also do positive 10 times negative 1, right? Both of those numbers are going to multiply to give you negative 10. The same thing I can do negative 5 times 2 and 5 times negative 2. So when you have a negative number as your constant, you have to know that one of those factors has to be negative. Now, here's a little trick. When you're looking at your middle term, you say, all right, what two numbers, you know, I'm multiplying to give me a negative number. What two numbers have to, um, are going to add to give me negative? Well, the larger of your factor has to be negative. That means the only two possible options I have are negative 10 and 1, which do not add to negative 3, and negative 5 and 2, which do add to negative 3. So therefore, I can write them in negative 5 and positive 2. And since you're both, you have x and x, it's not really going to matter um, which way you write that in there. And so which also brings me back to this case, though. This also could have been written as negative 1 times negative 5. But the reason why I didn't even start confusing you at the beginning is because the middle term is positive. So the only two factors have to also be positive. All right. So let's uh, continue on here. So now I have a little bit larger one. I have x squared plus 12x minus 28. So now, um, basically, let's go back to the diamond method. 
So I say, all right, 28, what two numbers multiply to give me 28, but then add to give me positive 12. So I go and notice this is a negative 28. But the difference is, this is negative, that was negative. But now, your middle term was negative, so that meant the negative number had to be, um, my, my larger factor had to be negative. Now my middle term is positive. That means the larger factor is always going to be positive. So rather than writing out negative 10, positive 1, positive 10, negative 1, I'm just going to write the larger fact, I'm just going to write down all the factors, but I'm just going to make the larger factor negative. So let's write the factors for 28. So I have 28, so I can do 28 times 1. I can do 14 times 2. Um, 3, I can do 6. 8, 6 does not go into there, but 4, 4 times 7, and I believe that's it, All right? Yes. Okay. So those are my three factors. Now again, oops, uh, let's write the larger factors over here on the side. So remember, I said that since my middle term is positive, the larger terms all have to be positive. That means these all have to be negative. So by combining these, which is the only two that gives me, neg uh, gives me positive 14? You can see it's positive 14 and negative 2. So therefore, by writing my factors, I have x plus 14 times x minus 2. Very good, right? Um, so let's go and move on to the last one, which I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. Um, again, guys, if I was just going to do this in my head, I have x times x times x, all right? Now, notice that I have a positive 16, right? So I want to write all the factors of 16 just like what we did here. But now, notice my middle term is negative. So rather than writing the positive, because the reason why I wrote the positive factors for 5, because my middle term was positive. Now my middle term is negative. So when I'm writing the factors of 16, I'm only concerned about them both being negative. OK? And what you see is, which two terms, when I add these up, are going to give me negative 8? Obviously, that's x minus 4 times x minus 4, which is actually a perfect square trinomial, which I can write later. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is kind of like your basic um, definition of ways to be able to factor a quadratic when a is equal to 1. Thanks.